G'day folks, welcome to another Learn to Paint Club episode. Rod Moore here with you from Moore Art School and the Learn to Paint Club. Now today we're gonna to do a great little uh, landscape and um, it's gonna be of the Glasshouse Mountains, which is a beautiful part of the hinterland region here up on the Sunshine Coast. There's quite a bit of depth in this painting, so that's what we wanna capture is some of that depth. So we run a horizon line through there, which we won't sort of see that so much as we get this painting underway. However, it's good to know where it is. And then there's a row of mountain ranges, very faint. Um, so I'm not even gonna worry about just getting that shape perfect. We'll just put that in. It's way, way, way off in the distance. And then a little bit more water. So the main little mountains of the uh, Glasshouse Mountains, one of them sits sort of sitting halfway in the photo, but don't make it halfway. Let's just set it off centre. And it runs up like so, breaks over that horizon line, and then it runs back in there like so. And then we've got some smaller ones, that's the biggest one. They've got some smaller ones that live in like here. And these are, I think are all old volcanic um, ranges, I think. And then there's one that sits sort of in front here, which has got, I'll just, I'll make it a little bit bigger just so that it stands out a bit. Just lives in front there like so. Okay, now I think that might be a good tone. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, I think that could work quite well. And I'm going to just run it through into the valley as well. Okay, just for these main two Of these mountains here. So I think these are all old volcanoes from memory, someone was telling me. Okay, run that in through there. But I'm not going to do these two distant ones with that same tone because I want to create some layers here. So what we'll do is we'll just take a bit more white and we'll mix it on the edge. We're not going to mix it in the middle, okay? Much easier to mix it on the edge and then we can judge the two colors and I'll add a bit more blue to that. Okay, and we'll just test that. Is that gonna give us separation? Not enough, so a bit lighter and a bit bluer. That tone's probably gonna do it. So you can see there now that there's some separation happening between those two layers. So we are going to go red, bit of yellow, bit of the blue. Okay, we're gonna make a, a warm dark, basically. We'll just run that in through here. Just get a little bit of water, just to loosen that up, because this can be a thin wash through here, really. Bit more blue into this corner, okay. Dark corner, we don't want to draw the eye to that. Probably the same there, really. Okay, that's our tree there. So, more of this red, more of the yellow. And get that in there. So it's a nice big area here that we're dealing with. So you're gonna need plenty of paint. Um, you don't wanna to fuss too much. We're just blocking in. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're now gonna do step number three, which is of course our finishing touches, our details and our highlights. So I think we'll start with this tree. We'll get that established in as a nice dark in the foreground. And uh, then we'll come in and look at these uh, trees and bushes that are a little bit further away and then down into the valley we'll do some highlighting on there with some trees there. So just to recap, we've got the sun coming in from this side, or the light, 
and that's going to cast, we're going to have a nice big shadow here. So I'm going to make the rest of this quite a warm, uh, grassy, green grass uh, foreground. Okay, so we'll start off with this tree. And add to the darkness of it. So you can see that's quite a nice dark that's been created there. So what I'm going to do is just use this brush and I'm just going to establish some of the foliage. Um, so we'll just push the edge of the brush. So I'm just pushing that edge there, just scumbling it up through the paint there and um, loading the brush like so. And I'm going to use that edge again. I'm just going to think, okay, where do we want some foliage? And I'm just going to you know, randomly place some foliage, but I don't want to have it too thick. So leave some gaps, you know, where the sky is coming through. Down the centre there, we'll get a bit thicker with it. Okay, so it's getting a little bit too warm. So just a little bit of blue in there to cool it back. Okay, it was getting too warm because it had uh, more yellow ochre and alizarin crimson, the two warmer colours, than it had the blue in there. So just a little touch of blue just brought it back. And I've got quite a bit of paint on the brush, so I'll just pull some of it off on the board there. So I only need a little bit of paint here just to test. Okay, so if we test here and uh, we we'll start to shape up our foliage here, uh, don't lose all the dark. But the light's coming from over here, so that's where we're going to highlight. Is the side that the light's coming from. Okay, we're a little bit over there. So as it gets a bit further away, I'll go a little bit more white and a little bit more blue in that mix. Okay, so I'm cooling it and lightening it. Okay. And you should notice a difference in those tones, which we are. I'm just very lightly just brushing that in there. Okay, good. Getting there. Let me now go and take our cadmium yellow medium and we'll, we'll do some of this grass in here. We'll, we'll start off with a mid-tone with the grass and then we'll, um, we'll hit it with some highlights towards the end. So we've got a chunk of that. Chunk more of the ultramarine blue. A little bit of red, so it's not too bright. A little bit of yellow ochre for the same reason. And then let's just run this. Down like so. I'm just going to vary my brush strokes up here. I'm not going to just run it horizontally. And I'm going to let some of that underpainting come through as well. You can see automatically, even though we haven't gone for our brightest tone for this field yet, you can see that it's automatically starting to push everything else back because everything else is a little bit greyer and less saturated. Okay, I'll come down to this tree here and we'll just work around this shadow. Nice big juicy stroke that one. I'll just work some of that out so it's not too bright. Okay.
I'm just going to mix it up the variety there. Get a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of lizard and crimson in there so we don't have it all the same. Break up some grasses growing up into the shadows there. So just play around with it, you know, like there's no right way to do this. It's just a matter of creating some interesting brush texture because look, we've got a big area to cover there. So we just want to get some interesting textures into the grass and um, some interesting tones. So just vary it up and if, you, if you're not happy with the way you've, you've done it, then you can come back and redo it, you know, just let it dry off a bit. Let's just punch this up a little. Oop, too much paint on the brush. Now, what I was going to do is just get some pure white here, just on the tip of the brush, and let's just go and put some fence posts in. Stop the... Uh, Cows running over the edge there. Now, of course, if you're doing this in oils, you do exactly the same as what I'm doing. You just thin your paint down really in, um, in the blocking stage. But I, I tend to use, because I am an oil painter, I tend to use the acrylics um, much like oils in the way I apply them. And the process that we go through is pretty much the same as what I do in oils. So that's looking good now. That field's starting to really um, have a nice, warm, bright feel to it. Do you have you that? We'll just strengthen up some of these grasses in here. Just dab in some that colour. And the key is you don't want to. Um, blend that too much in with the underpaint. So just tap it on, but don't work it too much. Okay, well, I think that's uh, pretty much all we'll do with this one. I think uh, we've achieved our objective. We've got a nice sort of depth in there. We've got the um, glasshouse mountains in the background. We've got a nice sort of mid distance row of trees here and then this nice warm foreground and you know if anything i'd maybe touch up a little bit more work in the tree um, but i think we've got it to a point now where it's a nice little painting that you can do and have a go at at home um, so have a go at this one let me know how you go send me a photo i'd love to see it and uh, i'll see you next time in the learn to paint club cheers for now